Hello guys, and thank you for listening or watching another episode of Live Free Podcast, where I talk about living a life of freedom, rest, and expansion in Christ Jesus. I know you saw from the title, the revelation of what does it really mean to be in the world, but not of the world. I'm going to give it to you in the most simplistic way that God has given it to me. I <clears throat> really have gotten a revelation of what this really means. And even though we've heard the scripture time and time again, there's just something about it that really clicked for me this time when God was showing showing it to me in a in a different light, you know. And and I believe that the way he has shown it to me this time has actually given me peace in knowing um how to walk in this world and live in this world without feeling like I'm walking in just in a straitjacket and being saved, you know, and being a believer. So we are set apart. We're supposed to look different. We're not supposed to fit in when it comes to the things of the world. But what does the Bible say how we are to be in this world, but not of the world? Well, according to, you know, the word of God, when we read the, 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 the world, when we see not of the world in the Bible, in the New Testament, we are reading the Greek word cosmos. Cosmos often refers to the inhabited earth and the people who live on the earth, which functions apart from God. Satan is the ruler of this cosmos, according to John 12 and 31, 16 and 11, and 1 John 5 and 19. By the simple definition that the word world refers to a world system ruled by Satan, right? We can more readily appreciate God's claims and uh, that believers are no longer of the world. We are no longer ruled by sin, nor are we bound by the principles of the world. In addition, we are being changed into the image of Christ, causing our interest in the things of the world to become less and less as we mature in Christ Jesus. So the more maturity you have, the more revelation that you will see and God will begin to unveil as he did with me to show me how living in the, in the world but not being of the world. So John 12 and 31 says, now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out, right? So because concerning the judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged, we know that we are children of God and the whole world is under the control of the evil one. So if we know according to the word of God, right? First John 5 and 19, it says, we know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know that we are going to look different to people if we are saved and if we are walking in the things of God. But how do we walk in the world and not be of the world, but still have fun, still enjoy the creation, still walk in the things of God and enjoy this abundant life that God came to give us? Because God said he came that we may have and enjoy life and have it more abundantly, right? So how do we do that in this modern day and time when there are so many different things that everywhere you look is filled with satanic and demonic things, right? You can't even look at a cartoon, you know, even when I'm looking at the cartoons with my, my grandbabies, right? I have to sometimes change the channel because the little cartoon people look like demons with horns on their head and with, um, and you know, and I can even see she was over here yesterday and I can see the expression on her face changing when these things are on the screen. She went from looking at a regular cartoon to when this cartoon came on, her face took a different countenance, right? So even in the cartoons, even in Disney, even in the Harry Potters and the, the witchcraft and all of the things, you know, I don't even understand how you can make cartoons, demons out of cartoons. That's supposed to be something fun and enjoyable, but yet Satan is the God of this world. And you might say, oh, it's just a cartoon, or you might say, oh, it's just a Halloween, or oh, it's just this and it's just that. But I'm here to tell you that you have to come against the spirit of compromise because the spirit of compromise will try to pull you into a realm and into releasing things into your life that will wreak havoc in not only your life, but in the life of your children and your family, if you are not careful. So how do we do it? How do we walk in the divine order of God? And, and how do we walk in this world and live around amongst all these different things that, you know, is not of him? 
We walk in the spirit and we can only do that through the power empowerment of the Holy Spirit, because the empowerment of God's grace is going to give you, you know, Holy Spirit is going to give you the empowerment to be in the world, but not even desire it. Right. Because certain things I don't even desire some places I don't even desire to go. I have no interest in it where when I was in the world, I had a lot of interest in it. So that's how I can see the difference in then and now. Because when you start to let God do a work in your heart and do a circumcision on your heart, though these things, you won't have to try to be good, as some people will say, or, okay, I'm going I'm, I'm to be good. Oh, it's not even about that. He takes the desires away from you and put the desires of the things of the, of the kingdom of God in your heart. So therefore, it's not a struggle and it's not a fight to not be partake of the worldly things because the desire is no longer there to do it. Now, when you disconnect yourself, which I have done before, you disconnect yourself from the vine, which is Jesus, and we are the branches. We are to stay consistently connected. Then you start to go into the spirit of compromise. You start going into the spirit of, oh, it's not a big deal. It's just Halloween. The kids look so cute. Oh, it's not a big deal. It's just horoscope. It's not a big deal. Oh, it's not a big deal. You start to, to go into all these things that will pull you out of the revelation of who God is. And not only that, pulling you out of walking from victory into being a victim and being in bondage with the enemy. So, we are in the world and we are, but we are not of the world. And the empowerment comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you have a true, sincere heart, right? If you truly want to walk in the things of God, God will empower you with the grace, a supernatural grace that would that will now begin to take those things out of your heart and begin to replace them with his will, his word, and his ways. Therefore, you're not even desiring it. So you don't, you're not, you don't, you don't miss anything, right? So I've been on both sides of the track and I don't miss a thing, guys. I don't even desire it. I don't even want to do it, you know? So the Bible says, according to Romans, right? The book of Romans 12, one and two, that we are to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, it says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing, hear that word again, testing, you may discern what is the will of God and what is the good and acceptable and perfect. So when your mind has been being renewed, and that's being renewed every single day, we haven't arrived. We haven't arrived. Trust me when I tell you, the mind has to be renewed every single day. So we're, we're putting on the mind of Christ, right? We let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And we are allowing the Holy Spirit to put God's desires in us, right? So it says, do not be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is the good and acceptable and what is perfect, right? We must also understand that being in the world but not of it is necessary if we are to be a light to those who are in spiritual darkness. We are to live in such a way that those outside of the faith see our good deeds and our manner and know that there is something different about us. For we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation a peculiar people that God has called you out of the darkness into you, his marvelous light. So we are to be a light, right? A light set on a hill. We are to be that person where when someone wants to be ministered to, they know that because of our lifestyle that they can come to us. They can come to us because they don't want to get the same advice from the people that are walking in darkness with them, but they want a pers God's perspective on things. They want to see that there's a difference in people that actually follow God, not only just in mannerisms, but also in a lifestyle which consists of um, prosperity, which consists of healing, which consists of miracles. I said, you know, you know what I said, what's fly to me? What's fly to me when you can still walk in prosperity and then you can still help people and lay hands on them and cast demons out or heal the sick and raise the dead. To me, that's what's, what I call fly. I like that. I like knowing that I'm walking with God and not have to be of the world. But guess what? I still walk in power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit, meaning not just in lip service only. Right. I'm not just prophesying, but we casting out devils. So if somebody need to be healed, we're laying hands on them and we're healing the sick. 
That's, that, that says a lot, and it speaks volumes to people that are walking in darkness, people that are on their deathbeds, that are sick, that really need God, right? That really need the God of the Bible, and not just a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, which is the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. A lifestyle where the character actually lines up with the gift. And it's not just the gift that's speaking, but it's the character also that they can see in a, in a lifestyle of abundance. That's what you call the abundance of God. It's not just money. It's not just materialistic things, right? But it's just those intangible things, healing, miracles, signs, wonders, walking and moving in him and having your being and knowing that you can still be in joy and peace and walk in the Holy Spirit and still do the will of the Father and still enjoy yourself. You can still go to barbecues. You can still go to the mall and go shopping, right? You don't have to isolate yourself from the world. You don't have to not have a good life. God wants you to have a good life. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be blessed. He wants to put you and elevate you and put you in places with celebrities and put you in places with people of influence, with kings and queens, so that his word can come forth and break the power of the devil off of people, right? He wants that. He wants that. He wants to be able to use us to that capacity and that anointing, right? Because it's not so much to say I'm a Christian or I'm saved or I'm Catholic or I'm this, but it comes with power and demonstration. And the best demonstration that you can ever show somebody is love. The Bible says they will, you will know, they will know that you are his disciples by the love that you have for people. And I'm telling you where there's an absence of love, there's an absence of God. You can't say you love people and love God, but then hate people. It doesn't work like that. So when you're in the world, but not of the world, these characters, um, characteristics and attributes would be a direct reflection and a byproduct of you and being in the kingdom of God, right? So wherever you are, the kingdom of God is still present, no matter where you are and where, where, wherever God placed you. The kingdom of God is present when you walk on the scene. So you have the power and all authority and the government of heaven coming with you so that you people can really see the God of the Bible and not just God in lip service, right? So we must also understand that, right? Even the heathen knows that by the fruits you should know them. And as believers, we should exhibit the fruit of the spirit within us. Being in the world also means that we can enjoy the things of the world, like I just mentioned, such as the beautiful creation God has given us, but we are not immersed ourselves in what the world values, nor are we to chase after worldly pleasures, right? Pleasure is no longer our calling in life as it once was, but rather the worship of God. We are to worship him in our lifestyle. Our lifestyle should rebuke the enemy. So it's not enough to just say these things, but it's also you walking in power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And by the love of God, the more love you have, the more power you walk in. The more you forgive, the more power you walk in. The more healing, the more miracles you'll see. You have to have a love for people. Love God, love people, no matter what color, what race, no matter what the status is, no matter what the title is, no matter what somebody has done to you, you have to forgive. You have to do it. It's the word of God, right? And James 4 and 4 would say, you adulterous people, you do you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an, becomes an enemy of God. So I'm here to tell you, if you look like the world, but you are a Christian, but you are a born again believer, right? Or a citizen of the kingdom of God. And but you look like everybody else, you are now an enemy of God, and you don't want to be an enemy of God. You don't want to partake in, in um, demonic uh, gatherings, uh, celebrating Halloween, uh, speaking on horoscopes, and you don't want to be into witchcraft, and, and, and you don't want to be into all these manifestations and all these uh, wicked things that the world does, you know, reading the Harry Potter books and doing, watching things on TV that is allowing the enemy to enter your homes through your children and all. We have a responsibility as the born again believers, as citizens of the kingdom to walk in the spirit and we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay. So those who are a friend of the world is an enemy of God, whether they realize it or not, they can, they can say, Lord, Lord, all day long, but God's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you, you do work of iniquity. Why? Because you chose to be a part of 
the world and not a part of the kingdom of God. Even though you may say you know God, if you are a friend of the world, you are enemy to God. This is what the word says. And we cannot, truth cannot be compromised for the sake of peace. Truth cannot be compromised because you want to people please, because you want to fit in, because you want to be liked. I always tell people deliverance one-on-one -on -one is being delivered from what people think. The majority of the things that people are caught up on, even uh, young teenagers, uh, peers in your school or college or uh, your job or your careers or your neighbors or your friends, deliverance one-on-one -on -one is being delivered from people and being delivered from what people think about you. If you can get past that, you're on your way. Because a lot of things, people will actually be paralyzed because they're so afraid of somebody talking about them. They're so afraid of what people think. And really what that is, honestly, if I can just keep it 100, it's a form of pride. Because we don't want to be looked at in a certain way. But if Jesus was scoffed, if he was spit upon, if he was uh, rejected, if he was um, treated horribly, how much more will we be treated horribly as well? We're, we, don't super, we don't surpass Jesus, right? We know that this is a part of the process, right? This is a part of being a part of the kingdom of God. It's just, it is what it is. And faith is either like this, either you believe it or you don't. Faith is some things I tell people can be caught, can be taught, and some things can be caught. But I'm here to tell you a lot of things with God has to be experienced. So you're going to experience the rejection. You're going to experience the hatred. You're going to experience um, people trying to condemn you. But that's why we renew our mind and we put the mind on the mind of Christ. That's why we know we're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. That we are blessed in the city and in the field. No matter where our feet shall tread on, it is our ground to take. And until you know your identity in Christ Jesus, you will always be subject to what other people say. You will always be have the fear of man. So I just want to pray right now in the name of Jesus that the fear of man will no longer have you entangled with the yoke of bondage. We come against the fear of man. We come against the spirit of compromise right now that will try to compromise, have you compromise the things of the most high God in the word of God. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear of man has paralyzed so many people. So we break that and we bind that in the name of Jesus. And we lose the peace of God. We lose the protection of God. We lose the mind of Christ on you right now. That you will move in him and have your being. That the joy of the Lord and the peace of God will rule in your heart like never before. And we release the angels of war and warfare to break off old mindsets and traditions and religion and the fear of man and the spirit of compromise. To release the fire of God to consume every evil spirit that has tried to infiltrate you or infiltrate your marriage or infiltrate your children. Uh, we come against the spirit of bullying right now, not only in schools, Father, but the spirit of bullying, bullying even in the church. We come against the spirit of bullying even in friendships and in social circles and on social platforms. We release the fire of God right now to consume, to infiltrate, to annihilate, to assassinate every spirit right now, witchcraft of divination. We come against every yoke of bondage right now, according to Isaiah 10 and 27, that we destroy it with the anointing of fire of God. And we release the angelic host to war on your behalf, to war for your families, for your children and for your friends and for your co-workers. In the name of Jesus, let God arise over you today and let every enemy be scattered. Walking in the spirit will allow you, not to, will allow you to be in the world, but not of the world, saints. That is the word of the Lord today. We are in the world, but not of the world. God loves you with an everlasting love and his grace is more than sufficient for you to walk in the spirit because it's gonna empower you to walk and to move in him and to enjoy this life and have beautiful things, beautiful homes, beautiful, nice things and still not be a part of the foolery. To God be the glory and until the next time, I will see you in the next video. Bye, loves.